If you want to build an engine of unfathomable power, you have to start small, really small. Not a fire-breathing V12, nor a V10, not even a V8. It starts as a little V6 engine that's hand-built in Yokohama, Japan, by four craftsmen with a combined experience of over 100 years. This relatively unassuming power plant over the last decade has become the preferred building block to develop quadruple-digit horsepower and still be docile enough to commute to work if needed. If you ask any car enthusiast what is Nissan's best engine, they will more than likely say the RB26 or the SR20, but I will argue that's false. It's the little V6 called the VR38 nestled in the Nissan GTR that's Nissan's greatest accomplishment and arguably the best to ever come out of Japan. On this episode of Explain, we will dissect the most potent engine to ever come out of Japan and detail the engineering behind its unrelenting power potential. Welcome to Explain. You can't have the rare and venerable VR38 engine without its more well-known and controversial cousin, the VQ engine. Nissan's VQ engine was a developmental leap from the iron block brutes of the 80s and 90s, known as the VGV6 and the RB inline 6, made famous by the 300ZX and the Skyline GTR. The VQ was developed around the concept of being as agile as a feather, which ultimately gave birth to an aluminum block dual over cam V6 with lightweight reciprocating components compared to its predecessors. It was debuted in 1994 in the Nissan Sephiro, which domestically we know as the Maxima, with three different configurations, a 2 liter, a 2.5 liter, and 3 liter V6, where the displacement was enlarged using a bigger cylinder bore. The VQ initially was never meant to be a high-level performer, but as the Japanese economy stagnated and the prior economic boom of the 80s turned into a recession, the VQ would have to fit more roles than initially planned, even one that carried the GTR nameplate. Chief engineer of the R34 GTR, Kazutoshi Mizuno, wanted to replace the decade-old RB26 DETT with a twin turbocharged variant of the newer Nissan VQ architecture, since it would theoretically be lighter, shorter, and feature variable controlling of the intake valve timing, but with development budgets paper thin, the road-going R34s would have to keep the tried-and-true RB26 but the GT500 spec race cars in mid-2002 would replace the RB26 with a special engine developed by Nismo and assembled by Autec under the designation VQ30DETT. This engine is the spiritual father to the VR38. It was 30 kilograms lighter than the RB26, with a bore and stroke of 93 millimeters by 73.3 millimeters, which the bore diameter being 7 millimeters larger allowed for larger valves than the RB. It could produce an output of 485 metric horsepower at 5600 RPM and 735 newton meters at 4000 RPM. The limited production VQ30 DETT would propel the number 23 Zanavi Nismo GTR to victory in the 2003 Japanese Grand Touring Car Championship, and it was the last time the R34 would compete in the JGTC. The VQ was now proven in the crucible of touring car racing, and with the launch of the Fair Lady Z a year prior, the VQ engine now had a sports role outside of the racetrack. The Fair Lady Z's success and existence entirely can be attributed to the Renault executive turned Nissan CEO, Carlos Ghosn, who gave the green light for a financially struggling Nissan to develop a sports car and the gamble paid off big time. His gambling addiction wouldn't stop with the Fair Lady Z, but also reviving Nissan's former engineering marvel, the GTR. 
Development of the R35 was put in the hands of Mizuno-san, who initially wanted a V6 engine in the R34 and now could turn his dreams into reality. By 2005, there were fully functional prototypes and test mules cloaked in Infiniti G35 paneling to confuse the untrained eye. But the wider stance, the NACA ducts, the quad exhaust, and the intercoolers were a dead giveaway to a GTR test mule. The new power plant was designated as the VR38DETT, an evolution of the VQ35 with the same bore diameter, bore spacing, and bank angle, but stark differences. The VR38 has a taller deck height of 244mm, identical to the VQ40 engine, and uses a bed plate, which splits the block at the crank center line and integrates all the main caps all into one cast piece for rigidity. The VR, unlike the VQ, has a closed deck surface, where there's more aluminum material surrounding the plasma line cylinders, aiding in stability of the bore during high cylinder pressures. The bore remained the same diameter, but the stroke increased by 7 millimeters, giving it 3.8 liters in displacement, and the camshaft exhaust duration and lift are increased to evacuate spent gases and reduce pumping losses since it's turbocharged. The twin IHI turbochargers are a one-piece manifold and turbine design to prevent exhaust leaks and quickly spool to 0.8 bar of boost, developing 480 metric horsepower at 6,400 RPM. Set. I plant my foot on there, and then I go... Bloody hell! That is spectacular! I'm gonna do that again, hang on. <laughs> By 2007, the production spec GTR would debut and boasted a Nürburgring Norch life of time of 7 minutes and 38 seconds which was two seconds faster than its benchmark, the Porsche 911 Turbo. The performance of the GTR was half attributed to the new engine, but the other half was undoubtedly the very complex Atesa ETS all-wheel drive system. The Borg Warner GR6 dual-clutch transaxle is located at the rear for better weight distribution and uses a carbon front-to-rear drive shaft adjacent to a smaller steel rear-to-front drive shaft. The insane chassis rigidity of the R35 meant that there was no need for a torque tube to connect the drivetrain like you see on Corvettes and didn't need a strut tower brace like the prior GTR models. And with a brutal launch control strategy on the early R35s, it could hit 60 miles per hour in 3.2 seconds. And pull 1.0 G of lateral acceleration on a skid pad. As impressive as the R35 was in stock form, it wouldn't hold a candle to what tuning companies would begin to achieve when they experimented with the new architecture. The combination of free-flowing downpipes and a mid-pipe to decrease the back pressure, less restrictive intake pipes, larger injectors, and pump since the stock units tap out pretty quickly, and 85% ethanol fuel can quickly reach north of 600 foot-pounds at the wheels, which is the upper limits of the stock connecting rods. The horsepower measurement is almost irrelevant since horsepower is a derivative of torque. The torque is what kills the rods, not the horsepower measurement, which is based on RPM. What tuners do to avoid bending and breaking these connecting rods is purposely reduce ignition timing below 5,000 RPM, which decreases the cylinder pressure and mitigates torque at the lower RPMs, but above 5,000 RPM, the peak horsepower will remain ideal. Around that same wheel torque figure, the GR6 dual clutch transmission will reach the limitations of its wet clutch packs. Six clutches in each pack transferring torque to the even gears in the 246 clutch A and the 135 in reverse in clutch B. In the GR6 and all DCT transmissions, the next gear is pre-selected or primed. So if you're currently in second gear, third gear will be pre-selected but not engaged by clutch B. When you pull the paddle to go into third gear, the A clutch will disengage simultaneously as the B clutch engages known as a crossover, and now you're in third gear, which happens within hundreds of a second, seamlessly changing gear ratios. If you're making high torque levels, that transfer won't be seamless as the clutches will slip and wreak havoc on the internals of the transmission. Since the connecting rods and transmission both have near the same torque limitations, most GTR builds will stop here at the bolt-on stage. If money is no object, the ceiling of potential on the VR38 is very high, 
With a simple but not cheap piston and rod combination, the factory crank and block can push into the 1300 wheel horsepower range, given you have the turbochargers, cooling efficiency, and fuel system to supply it. At that point, the DCT transmission would need to be upgraded with the whole kitchen sink, from a billet input shaft, PPG gear set, billet clutch baskets, 20 plate carbon clutch, and for the service alone to build it will be around $16,000, not including the transmission. While these power figures aren't unheard of, what gives the VR38 a unique quality amongst other legendary engines is a 1200 horsepower VR38 build can drive as docile as a factory car, idling just like stock, nice road manners, and completely unassuming just slightly louder from the unrestricted exhaust. That is just not capable with the 2JZ, the RB26, and the LSX builds, with the exception of the 5-liter Coyote and 5.2-liter Voodoo and Predator. The key to this, like the Coyote 5.0 and the 5.2 Voodoo, is the VR38's excellent cylinder head flow and not needing radical camshafts to make north of 1200 horsepower which is an absolute necessity for the 2JZ and RB, this doesn't make one superior to the other, it's just the byproduct of a well-engineered engine. Beyond the 1200 horsepower mark, the prices just get as eye-watering as the power potential. There's the capability of 2000 horsepower with sleeved blocks with billet internals and 3000 horsepower with billet blocks that cost $20,000 alone just for the block itself. At that point, the built transmission warranties become non-existent and the turbos are so large they can't fit in the standard location anymore. And if you pay a shop to do the work, it'll cost the same as the GDP of some countries. The limits of the VR38 is simply how big a check you can write. The DNA of the R35's potent drivetrain would trickle down into more attainable cars from Nissan, most notably the VR30 DDTT. There's more variance between the VR30 and VR38 than there is of the VQ35HR and the VR38, as they were developed almost a decade apart. The VR30 is a square bore stroke configuration unlike the oversquare VR38, and it sits at a happy medium between torque and high RPM capability. The block of the VR30 is an open deck block design, similar to the VQ35, and while not ideal for extreme stresses, they really don't tend to crack. The advancements of the VR30 is in the direct injection fuel system that allows for higher static compression, the liquid charger intercooling, and the integrated exhaust manifolds to decrease the heat loss from the turbocharger, which help them spool quicker. Similar to the VR38, they respond extremely well to bolt-on modifications. Free-flowing downpipes with full exhaust intakes and upgraded low-pressure and high-pressure fuel pump and tuning away from matching the factory output of a new GTR. With upgraded injectors and turbos like the VRX70s from Z1 Motorsports, the VR30 can touch 700 wheel horsepower, which is astounding for this relatively small 3 liter displacement. The VR30's latest task by Nissan is powering the new Z sports car, where it remains identical mechanically to the Q50 and Q60 Red Sport the Nismo Z's VR30 engine gets a 20 horsepower and 34 foot-pound increase with overboosting the engine. While it doesn't have some exclusive architecture like the VR38 is to the R35 GTR, the development of the VR30 in the aftermarket since 2016 has made the Z instantly moddable.
Not long after its release, AMS Performance ran a 9 second quarter mile with the Z, using all the years of Q50 and Q60 experience to get the job done. While the VR30 is no replacement for the venerable VR38, and as of making this video, you can still buy a brand new R35 GTR, a car that literally was developed at the same time of the C6 Corvette and George Bush was still president, it's an affordable alternative with great upwards capabilities. When it comes to legendary Japanese engines, the VR family isn't mentioned enough, but what can't be denied is the craftsmanship of the VR38 and the engineering behind the VR30, both great engines that deserve more recognition. It's not every day a company that balances on the verge of bankruptcy can still put out amazing products. And when, not if, these engines go away for good, it's safe to say they'll never be forgotten.